and welcome back to Devana Lee Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name's Nicole Reed, and today we are here for Slow Stitching Saturday and we're going to be working some more on the wool felt project that I'm working on and it is called Birdsville Cushion. So let's get started. <laughs> watching from thank you very much for taking some time out of your day and spending it with me um, while we do a little bit of crafting and chit chatting so today as I said we're working on the Birdsville cushion again we've been working on this for a couple of weeks now and um, yeah I haven't got a lot done although I do have all of my red leaves done <laughs> I still don't have the tree done but as some of you know I have been heavily involved in filming and production and all the things that go on in the background so sometimes those extra crafts that I like to do take a little bit of a back seat and that has pr pretty much what's happened with this one but I pulled it out last night while I was um, online with my stitchy buddies and I got all of my red leaves done and started on my dark green ones so I'm just going to continue doing a little bit of that today and have a bit of a chit chat about things that might have been might be going on in uh, the background and yes I am in a different location um, I thought I'd mix it up a little bit today and just relax a little bit because I've been sitting in those chairs for the better part of two weeks and um, yeah so I'm kicking off my shoes I've got me cuppa I'm sitting on my little couch this is actually in my sewing room so directly behind me here you can see just the top of my long arm machine and this is where all the fabric stuff is for the store so like all my cross stitch fabrics um, my my dyed um, cross stitch fabrics all of my handmade items and stuff like that are there as well as in just behind those two little quilts that you can just um, where am I there oh you can see them behind the black and white one that's the door to my house so as you can see from the roof because a lot of you probably haven't seen the roof at this end you can see it's got a little bit on up this end it's got a little bit of a kick down well that goes all the way along and so my sewing room is only as wide as that so but it's long it's about 12 13 meters long and I have packed a fair chunk of change in this. Now, it is an absolute schmozzles at the moment. Once I clean it up a bit, I will give you a quick zoom around. And um, you can have a bit of a look. But at the moment, I'm not showing it to anybody because it's... When I get into production week, whew, do I get into production week? Stuff goes everywhere. Although I have cleaned up all of the paper and the fabric and the threads and everything off the floor because I nearly went A over the other day. <laughs> because I hadn't swept the floor because I was just busy you know like I do a lot of filming and get it done but anyway we are here to work on this so if you are new here I should just probably say three minutes into the video welcome to the channel um, this is a little bit of a relaxed sort of video I'm sort of just sitting here we have a bit of chit chat sometimes I might not talk sometimes you might have it with a bit of music and I'll just be working on something but today as I said we're going to be working on the leaves on this little um tree here now I'll give you a bit of a close-up of it you can see it there um, so yeah so that's what it looks like and um, well you probably can see it from that camera right there oh, I forgot about that camera being over top of me so yeah so anyway that's what we will be working on today and I'm doing all these little leaves so I'm not gonna be sewing anything onto the background I figured I'm just gonna do all the embroidery stuff all the wool felt stuff and then that way it's all done and then I can just concentrate on doing the tree because we do have like some birds to do and I might get them done as well now I have mentioned this before and I did mention it again to the lovely Gail because Gail also brought this kit at the same time with me when we were down at the um, when we were down at the quilt show we both got it together and um, She's basically said that she's going to wait until I've done mine and then she'll just watch the series and get all the tips and tricks. So um, in the last couple of videos, I have said when I started doing the leaves, if I had my time over again, I wouldn't follow the instructions. I would trace the leaves out onto the felt and then um, stitch it all on one little piece of felt because this is very fiddly and you will see in just a moment, it is very, very, very fiddly. If you don't have long nails... I, I suspect it would probably be even a little bit harder because at least with my nails I can pinch the edge of it whereas with 
um, just the pads of my fingers when I've like lost a nail. Um, it's fair, it's not easy. So, but anyway, it is what it is. So hopefully you can see everything okay. I'm just going to stretch over and move a light in a little bit closer because it is a little bit dark here. I can see on this pattern, and then that way it should be light enough for you to see. All right. So oh, let me just bring this over to where it needs to be. I reckon about there is pretty good. So I've got my little container of bits and pieces. So I'm working with uh, 470 on the green one. So you can see here that I've got all that um, stitching, which is a fly stitch that we're doing on this. And so I've just got one of these little terracotta um, containers and I'm just putting them in that. I've got my cuppa. And then I've got all of my other um, little bits and pieces that I need. So I'll have them. I've got three different colours in here. So I'm going to work on the dark green today. I've got my needle minder. I've got my magnifiers. And I've also actually put the um, colour that I'm using for each leaf. And I'm just wrapping that around and locking that into place. So I know that's the colour that I'm going to use for that particular colour of leaf. And uh, so I decided to do that this morning because I got to it last night and I'm like, oh, I can't remember what I was going to do. So, um, yeah. So I thought I'd go a darker one on this. I think that'll look really nice on that. And you can see that that one there will pop out really nice as well. And the um, other green one, that looks really pretty. pretty. I, I think it's going to look absolutely lovely. And that's the red ones. What they look like and it does really stiffen up the felt as well like it stiffens it up really well like I'm pretty happy with it so I thought well I've got some time this morning I really don't <laughs> I've still got so much to do um, I've got patent testers coming forward to uh, join in the patent testing group and I'll leave a form down below for that because you know the um, if I have a fair few then I can have a few things on the go um, so I haven't really got to the typing side of things yet. So um, I have I have one that is um, actually I have got to some of the typing. I'm about three quarters of the way through one and the other one I'm finished. I've just got to add one more picture into it and I'm probably not going to be able to add it into the test pattern because I've already made it and I really don't want to make the bag, bag again. The picture was just a little bit blurry and not close enough. So um, I might have to get one of the lovely testers to take a picture for that. I'll, I'll, I'll play around and see how I go. Um, that it, it's hard. It's a bag and one's a little zipper pouch. So um, it's a little fancy zipper pouch though. So we are doing a fly stitch for those that are new here. Um, so that basically I do that first stitch. And I, I don't know, last time I worked on this, I wasn't in the right frame of mind for embroidery because whatever I was saying in my head wasn't translating to my hands. <laughs> and I was all thumbs and I was just like, I was having a hard time with it. Um, I've sort of got my um, rhythm now as well. Like, And as I said, this is the first time that I've worked on something like this small. I do put my magnifiers on because I do get a little bit tired and... Um, at this stage of the, the month so my eyes are a little bit tired this morning plus I had a very late night because I made the mistake of starting a book and yeah you know I got sucked into the hundred pages and that's a good two two hours of reading two and a half hours of reading so okay now come on just thread I was having all sorts of problems last night with <laughs> I'm sitting there and I'm trying to to thread my needle and I kept not threading and I'm like what the heck's going on and then I realized that the needle the eye of the needle had broken I had broken it and um, that sometimes happens with these metal threaders you can break your needle and if you listen careful you can hear the parrots out the front They've got quiet now. So I have a tree at the front and it's called a drunkard parrot's tree. And this time of the year, we get all the parrots. We've got one out the back. The neighbours have got one a couple of doors down and I think there's one a couple of doors up and then we've got one in our backyard and we've got one in our front yard. And they 
go berserk like they go berserk in it it is like they are drunk i think i've got a short on my channel where you can hear them i've shown what the what the what it looks like There's not too many in there at the moment. There's um, they're, they're pretty quiet, but just before it starts to rain and um, in the afternoons, there's no recording here in the afternoons. You can't even hear myself think. There's that many of them out there. And especially when the berries come in, like it gets this little berry on it. And then there's one bird that comes here and he is so cranky when the parrots are in there. Like he gets so cranky if he's got to share that tree. It's like they're addicted to it. So you can see there that it's really fiddly. So I, my advice to you is definitely, if you're doing this, definitely, definitely trace out your, um, Can you hear that different bird? He's getting ready to go off at the parrots. <laughs> He's so noisy. He's like, he's, he's crazy. <laughs> and that's subdued. Normally he's like mental, like absolutely so loud and mental. And, but I love it. Like my husband goes, oh, I'll just, you know, like I said, oh, the, I said to him one day, the bloody birds, I can't record. They're just out there. And it was like in full bloom. And um, then he goes, oh, I'll just pull the tree down. I'm like, no, I like the birds. <laughs> Don't pull the tree down. <laughs> They're annoying. Yes, but I like them. So anybody that's been around for a while, you'll hear, like, you'll listen to videos, old videos, and you'll hear them in the background, especially, like, in, um, for anybody in America and, or in the Northern Hemisphere, in your fall, you'll hear them going off, and it's our spring and summer. Oh, that, so, yeah. Although this doesn't seem to be many berries blooming yet, they're just sort of just starting now. And if you Google drunkard parrot tree, it will bring up a picture of it. You'll get to see what it looks like. And I've also got, as I said, I think I'm pretty sure I've got a short on here where I explain about it. So we've got a couple of things. I, I know that a lot of you are hearing this on repeat this week. Um, it's just I'm, I'm taking in and I'm going to be mentioning it quite a bit. So I'm going to mention it now and I'll probably mention it again at the end. Um, we have a um, New Year's every year for the last couple of years. I've done a Zoom um, meet, meet up with my friends, like a stitchy meet up and stuff like that. And I open it up to the, the group. And so everybody can come, doesn't cost you anything, but there is a registration form and we do cap, we have capped the numbers um, so it just doesn't get so overwhelming. 
And we have a couple of people that are going to be appearing that you've probably watched. Gail um, is coming along. Uh, Morgana Stitchy Moon 75 will be there as well. And I think uh, Deb from Frog Cottage is going to pop in as well. She's not confirmed 100% yet, but she's thinking about it. She's asking the, asking the questions, the times and all the rest of it. So, um, yeah, so I've got a form down there, registration form. And basically... You need to put your email address in there because when it comes time to it, I will be sending out um, sending out the invite to you. So in that invite, it will have, and I've had a couple of questions, so Pete, the, this is why I'm also talking about it as well. So what will happen is the reason I need an email, and it's an email, not just an email that you use to sign up to things or anything like that, an email that you go into quite a bit. Now, when I send the invite, it can go into a couple of different places. It'll go directly into your inbox or it will go into your promotions or your spam. Okay, so if you've got a Google account, uh, generally it'll probably just go straight into your inbox. I've not had issues in the past. Um, but sometimes, sometimes it will go into the um, promotions box for Google. For other people, I have found it just goes into their, into their spam folder because it's coming from whatever like it's just because it's coming from zoom or something i'm not too sure <clears throat> excuse me um so yeah so basically what will happen at the moment the registrations are open i am contemplating depending on numbers if i reach the numbers um which i have sort of capped at about 60 because that's over like the way like people come in at different times um that's a lot of people, but I know that not everybody's going to be on at one time. So I've capped it at 60. Um, so once we reach 60, then I will tell everybody here that now you are going on a waiting list. So basically what I will do is I have been writing down everybody's name in a book. I've got the forms there. It tells me what numbers I have, and I think we're up to 16 at the moment. Um so but and we only started talking about it a couple of days ago so basically um you fill out the form you put your name in there especially your facebook name or your youtube name okay so i know who you are so if you're here on youtube but i haven't connected with you on facebook put both names in there for me um i just ask for your name so you don't have to give me a last name it can just be a first name that's fine um, but I do need that email so I can send you the information. Now, at the beginning of December, um, if I haven't reached the numbers, we'll keep going until I've reached the numbers. But in the beginning of December, I will send out a reminder. Uh, um, how I'll, you know, something along the lines, however many sleeps to the New Year's party, right? And so I will send out a reminder once a week. And then I will send out a reminder um just after Christmas, I will send out, like Boxing Day 26, I will send out a couple of reminders then. On the 27th of December, you will get your invitation, a password, the number that you need to log into, um, all that stuff, all the stuff that you need, okay? And also, um, you'll get the times that I'm going to be there, and which is already on the form. So if you go and have a look at the form, um, you will see what times I'm going to be there. Now, my times are Australian Eastern Standard Times because where I live, I don't have daylight saving. So for those in the southern states of New South Wales, for you, the room opens at 7 o'clock. But it's 6, it's six o'clock my time. Okay, so I'm going on my time. So just be aware of that. And, you know, on New Year's, I have been known to be up still at 3 o'clock because... Uh, yeah, my neighbours like to party a bit and you might even get some of that entertainment. It's always a lot of fun. <laughs> um, and so, although they have been a bit quiet lately, um, last night was a bit scary. I thought, it, like, I was on with the girls and I'm like, I think I just heard a gun. But I don't think it was across the road, directly across the road. I think it was, like, over in the next street because when they yell, it's quite loud. Um, that, But they don't always party, so they sometimes go out and whatnot but that is um the form down below and um you need to register for it because i won't be sending out into messenger or anything like that it won't be the um it'll be a different number a different password and all the rest of it if you've been into one before so um 
yeah, you have to fill out that registration form to get the password and all the rest of it. Now, after that, I'm not going to use your email for anything but for that, okay? If we've connected through email before, um, you know, so for instance, Gail or Morgana or Jenny. I don't know what this guy is doing. He's been cutting laps all morning. He must be working on his bike. He's been driving me mental. The whole house vibrates when he goes past uh, that, but anyway. <sighs> it's a small world that we live in and we're all very close. And um, yeah, so anyway, if I've connected with you before, well, I'm obviously going to have your email address or if you've signed up to our newsletter, which I don't send out a newsletter very often. On that, but after that, I won't be using your um, addresses or anything like that. I once the the New Year's thing is over, I will basically delete all those forms and I will have none of that information. Um, but on the as I said, on the twenty seventh, I will be sending out the invite. So that's the twenty seventh where I am. If you're in the United States, that will be the twenty sixth, the day after Christmas for you, when it should appear in your email. Okay, so all the information excuse me, got the hiccups now, will be there for you on how to log in and all the rest of it. There will also be in that some Zoom etiquette and it's um, just so everybody gets a chance to talk and all that sort of stuff. If you've got background noise, just mute it. And I think I talked about if you're going to be sewing while you're using your sewing machine, you have to mute it because otherwise no one can hear anybody else talking. Um, and because what will happen is your microphone will pick up the sound and then block everybody else's sound because it's like a if one person's talking another person can sometimes talk over the top of them but then it breaks the conversation so there'll just be a little um a little blurb there with the etiquette and just things to remember and stuff like that um especially for those that have not been in zoom before um they might not understand that that's what happens so but i think by this stage everybody's been in a zoom um chat and whatnot so if you want to come along to that um fill out the form as i said i am capped it, capping it at 60 and i know that there's a few people from the us coming in and all the rest of it and you probably know each other have your own um party in that room as well that way you don't you don't have to worry about paying for it or anything like that you're not limited to only 40 minutes it'll be open and you can just stay in there and you can have a really good time with your friends um and whatnot so i will be approaching a couple of people that um that i've been friends with for a long time that are coming from the us that are going to be in there and they will just moderate and stuff like that um and that'll just help you know if there's any problems or um my street is a drag street today what is going on like what is going on oh wow <laughs> let's all get outside you know what it is king of toes trucks out the front <clears throat> so for those that don't know my husband has a king of toe he has um his own page it's called king of toe and he does towing but he also works on cars and stuff like that well, actually, he doesn't do a lot of working on cars. He does a lot of collecting of cars. <laughs> but he is slowly um, building his workshop. So he's been filming a bit of that lately. He's been playing dirt and all the rest of it. But we've had rain, so he's been bog getting bogged and stuff. So he hasn't been able to do any of that. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing um, over the overhead camera. I think I had it set in the right place. And I sort of sat down and took a little bit of footage and seen where I was at and whatnot. So... But I might move it out of camera every now and again, sorry. Um, but yeah, so that's what's happening with the New Year's party. And I'm excited to, because um, there'll be some new friends in there. There'll be some old friends that we haven't connected with for a little while. Um, you know, we haven't seen each other face to face for a while, which is great. It's, all, it's almost like a, um, a mini retreat, but in the comfort of your own home. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I, I always enjoy it. I said to my husband, I'm like, oh, um, I'm, I've am i booked it. I've booked out uh, for the Zoom and, and whatnot. And he sort of just looked at me and said, we never do anything. So I thought I was pretty safe not talking to you about it. And he goes, no, I'm going to bed and watching YouTube. <laughs> no, we, don't, we don't go and do anything. It's just too many people out there for that sort of stuff. And um, the girls might go out this year, but who knows? Who knows? 
Well, Savannah will probably be in Brisbane, so, and Neralee might even be working because it's a Saturday and it's not a public holiday, so, um, yeah, so they'll have to just play it by ear, see what's going on. But I am looking forward to it, very much so, getting some stitches in. I have my project all ready to go. Well, not quite. I'm actually waiting for my stuff to come up from, um, I've got, I'm just, I'm waiting until November. I've got a few um, <clears throat> expenses this month that I have to, um, have to be mindful of my money. Um, or our money, not my money, it's not our money, but it's for business stuff, so like tax stuff and regos for the truck and all that sort of hill hoo plus then you've got your normal monthly expenses as well, so yeah. Oh, sorry about that, my husband just left for work, so he just came out, and so yeah, so um, I have a project that I'm going to do, and I showed it on my floss tube the other day, which is the, um, yesterday, which was the uh, sampler. So, um, as I said, we've got a few bills and stuff that we've got to pay, that uh, business expenses that are hefty this month. So we sort of, September, October, we sort of really watch what we're doing and stuff like that because, you know, um, we have school holidays and stuff and things always slow down during school holidays. So um, I spoke to Carolyn from A Stitch in Time and... Um, I said to her that I am wanting to kit it up. So she's getting it all together for me and going to send the invoice in November. And then, um, yeah, I'll pay for it then. And then I'll have it all here, ready to go. I got some other stuff from her the other day too. So that's on its way. I checked last night. It's in New South Wales. It's taken a sweet time to get here. But, yes, yeah, so hopefully that will come in the next week. And then I'll have that and then I'll probably want to start that but I'll probably wait until see how I go because it's Halloween related and there's some beautiful chart and I'll do a flip through when, we, when it comes it's a book and there's 11 patterns in it and it was the latest release from um, Teresa Kogut and I love her stuff I love her stuff I'm always ooing and ahhing over her stuff and I haven't <clears throat> because I had so much, already had so much stuff here, I hadn't really purchased anything. I just ooh and ah of it. But I've got a lot of her punch needle stuff from the um, punch needle and primitive stitch, is it? Primitive stitch and punch needle um, magazine. <clears throat> I think I have all of their, their magazines except for the last year. And I'll just go in and buy them at one time because they only bring out four magazines a year. <clears throat> and um yeah so basically i've got a lot of her punch needle stuff but i don't have a lot of her cross stitch stuff and then she brought out i was watching her um just before they went to market i was watching her floss tube and she was showing the pieces and then she said it was in a book and it was 11 patterns in the book i'm like sign me up and take my money so um i was going to uh, like i went to to look for it and i wasn't sure where to get it and then i thought oh i wonder if carolyn's got it and then i went onto her page and she actually had a pre-order for it so um yeah so sign me up and um so she has it so you don't pay anything like there was no deposit for it and so i put it down and then um she sent me an invoice a couple of weeks later when it was ready to go and um yeah so i paid that and had a bit of a chit chat to her while i was on the phone about the sampler because it was still um it had just arrived and so i thought well i've got her on the phone i'd rather get it from here in australia than um wait for it for months to come from overseas and carolyn's great like she she has a really good range of stuff and a lot of time when I'm looking for things, I just, I'm, I'm automatically going to her now. Um, whereas once upon a time, I used to go to one, two, three stitch. And um, like I've got my own DMC here and I've got my own Cosmo floss. But for my fancy flosses, uh, Carolyn's my go-to girl for that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, I think I, there's been a, a couple of charts that I have. Sorry, the truck's about to start. Um, that I have kitted up from her um flosses and whatnot so she's putting all the silks together for me and i had a bit of a speak, a speak like a conversation with her about it because i didn't really know much about the they're called uh, there's some french name but they call them avas on the back of the chart 
the soir or something they're called. Anyway, the, apparently there's two lots. So, um, and I was a bit, I, I didn't know what I was looking at because I'd never seen them before. So I thought, well, I'll, I've got her on the phone, I'll ask her. And so um, she pulled out the chart and we we're going through it. And then I said to her, that I, you know, the numbers on there and, and all that sort of stuff. And they were, um, like, they're, they're silk. So you expect to pay a pretty penny for them. And they were reasonably priced. Like, they were $7.50 and that was the stranded ones. And then I said, oh, well, what about the ones on the spool? Because I'm pretty keen to use the ones on the spool. Um, just for ease of storage and not getting all, um, like tangled up or anything like that now he's calling to his girlfriend he'll do that for ages <laughs> hopefully he'll stop soon he'll hear me talking and he'll stop um yeah so basically um I decided that I was going to go with the 103s, I think that she called them. So they're all in a spool. I, I, as I said, I don't know enough about them. It's the first time I'm going to be using them. I'm really looking forward to using them because everybody raves about them, how great they are and all the rest of it. And um, like I've used silk before because I use silks for you and um, I've used a couple other silks and whatnot. But um, I've not used these ones that everybody that does samplers seems to use. So... I thought, well, I'll get them, and um, like, there's a pretty lengthy list, but then they were cheaper, and I think she said, now don't quote me on this, I think she actually said that there was 50 metres on them, on the spools, which would sound about right, because they're like a Gudeman, you know, your Gudeman threads or your Sulky threads, the 12 weights, they're like that, and I'm stitching it on... Um, I was watching and it was quite funny because I was thinking the same thing and it's, I think it's called um, Thai Iced Tea, I think it's called, um, that I'll know when I get it. I, I'll have to go back and have a look at Hands Across the Sea. Hands Across the Sea showed a whole heap of fabrics and I can't remember who they were from and um, they might have even been Fox and Rabbit um, fabrics, I'm not 100% sure on that. but. When I edit this, I'll go to the video because I know which video it was and um, I'll find out who it was and I'll put all that down below. But I'm going to stitch it on 46 count. And <clears throat> I said, to, I, I hadn't thought of a colour. She goes, oh, what colour do you think? And I just, no sooner went to say something and she goes, oh, what about da 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 And I'm like, you know what? Yes, I seen Nicola was showing that and obviously, you know, we all watch Floss Tube and all the rest of it. So, you know, it's like we know these people. We've never even met them, but we're, you know, it's like we've known these people and it's like we're talking about it as if we've just seen them yesterday. You know, Nicola <laughs> from down the road. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, I said, yes, yes, that is that most definitely. And um, it's such a pretty fabric. Like, and I know that the computers don't do it any justice, but, oh, it looked divine on the monitor, so I'm guessing it's pretty, pretty special in, um, in real life. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. So I'm going back to, like, I'm sort of, um, anybody that's been around for a while knows with my um, cross-stitch stuff, I'm not a fan of the colours. Like, I, I do have some, but I'm still very muted with my colours. I'm not a fan of the big, bright, smacky-in-the-face fabrics. Um, and that's probably because of a lot of the styles that I do and whatnot. There's another one. See, sitting here chit-chatting, just gas bagging, having a cup. It's like we're having a visit. See, you're just sitting, for me, you're just sitting over there. Now, I know that a few of you are going to ask about this quilt behind me. I did not make it. Have a sip of coffee and let's talk a bit about this. So, I have this here because I have spoken about this on the channel before. Remember a couple of weeks ago when I was talking, we were doing hexagons. I did the hexagon swaps with Crafting with Dee Dee. So if you haven't seen it, I'll link it up down below. You can go and check that video out. Oh, didn't put a knot in that one. So um, I was talking about uh, when I did Instagram swaps. Okay. Um, and yeah, I don't think you can see this one. This is a, this is also an, um, on here. It's my table little table topper. Um, and it was a, also um, an Instagram swap as well. So, which actually has inspired me. His girlfriend's just turned up. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> they come every year. 
every year this pair come back um and he does that that little sound that you heard him making before and i know it's him because that's the sound he makes and then <laughs> they're, they're honey eater birds i'm not entirely sure what sort of bird they are but they are a honey eater and um they've got a really long beak and i will endeavor to try and get a picture of them they're really hard to they they move around they're like they're off their rockers but he makes that sound that monotone sound and then she'll turn up and then they get really raucous and they just flew off so they they're flying around um like you see them zip past and stuff like that they're pretty quiet when they fly but as soon as they land in that tree oh, they've got a lot to say but anyway um yeah so this quilt behind me <coughs> um was a swap on that and i i will um bring out from time to time different ones that i've got so this was Remember I talked about the black and white swap with a splash of colour. Black and white swap with a splash of colour. So this is the lady that has just disappeared. Like, I don't see her on there. Now, I will just put that needle in there so I don't lose it and move these. And let me just bring it down here. I'll just whack the camera. So it is a Bargello, okay, and I'll just find her name. Where is it? It's on here somewhere. She did label it for me. Haha, <laughs> here it is. So, okay. Um, so this was from 2016. So that's when I started doing the quilt swaps. I'd done the a couple of hexagon swaps before this one. Okay, so this was handmade for Nicole um, at Nicole Reed Devanali Designs because that's what my name used to be. And her name was My um, So Busy Life and um yeah but i've not um seen her on there since like there was nothing on there i mean i haven't checked lately but um the team i was in was um white unicorns and basically um it was black and white um swap quilt swap and but the thing was with a, a splash of color so even on the back she's put in black and white and she's got a splash of color on it absolutely gorgeous quilt and i'll i'll just um change the camera view for you and you can see it so that's what it looks like now i did i think i found this pattern i'm not 100 percent sure if it's still available or not but i'm pretty sure it was called fire and ice okay it was on craftsy before craftsy became what was it blueprint when it changed it was on craftsy before that so yeah so that's what it looks like and it's only this big and it's a bargello so a little bit closer for you um yeah so it is the very first one i got oh and i didn't make for her i made for someone else i'll just wipe that camera out again with my bum anyway i might just um, go this one <laughs> i don't want to have it down because my husband will like i'll put this away again i just wanted to bring it out because i did say that i was going to slowly bring them out so i thought instead of um doing a full-on trunk show i will just bring out one every now and again and show you now where did my leaf go yeah, oh there it is um that's so, what yeah. i got for my very first swap and there were some other little goodies in it like some lollies and and stuff like that and i can't remember whether she was from australia or if she was overseas that's the only thing that isn't on there but that's okay um but I don't do swaps anymore, and yeah, I haven't done any for a while, so. And um, yeah, so that was the first, I absolutely love it, absolutely love it. All right, so the other thing that I've talked about this week on the channel was the pattern testing thing. Um, so I'm looking for model stitches and uh, pattern testers for my bags and stuff like that. So there is a form down there for you to fill that out. If you are interested, please fill the form out. Make sure that you again have an email because I need to send you patterns and stuff like that. Um, and their PDF as patterns. So I need to be able to email them to you and um, converse with you when you are doing a test and whatnot so please make sure that the, those details are correct double check before you submit because i also send you the invite to that group the pattern testing group via email now one of the ladies did say that she had a problem um 
with the link if that is the case if you are running to issues and you're not on Facebook um, or not in, like you you're probably already in the group but if we're not connected on Facebook um, leave a comment on this video or any video and say hey I'm sending you a message on Facebook or Instagram and that way I can um, send you the the link there now the thing is it is a Facebook group so you will have to be on Facebook to do it um, and please put your Facebook name as well because I know that not everybody uses their Facebook Facebook name here on YouTube okay so I know who you are here on YouTube and I know where you've come from um, so all that information is down below as well um, what else has been going on not a lot really just um, Savannah's at work today I think the girls go to work at one o'clock because I've got um, Neralee and her best friend seems to be her best friend because she's here all the time she hasn't actually said that they're best friends but I'm gonna call it and say they are because <laughs> they live together all the time <laughs> Um, and they work together, they went to school together, um, Josie stays here in the school holidays because she lives way out of town, and um, so she comes and stays here for days at a time, um, and it makes it easier for her too, for work, because work's just, they work at the same place, like, they're always together, and they get along really well, which is really good. And some of the friends that she's had in the past, she hasn't really hit the jackpot with, so I'm really happy that she's found Josie. And um, yeah, so they're here. They're still asleep because they were up at three o'clock. Hence, what I'm still t I'm I'm tired because they kept waking me up, which is okay. Like they don't do it very often, but they were having a great old time, so I just let them go. I come out to the kitchen. I was there expecting a huge mess, but there wasn't. So um, they must still have the bowls and stuff in their room because they were in the kitchen. Because I could hear them clanking around. I thought, Christ, go to sleep. You've got to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> Ah, to be young. <laughs> oh, dear me. But, um, yeah, so I'm looking at the, the end of the year. I think you're all going to really enjoy the channel for the end of the year. I've got some great stuff happening. Uh, we've got, um, as I talked about the other day, we've got a, a, a little mini quilt that, well, it's a mini quilt wall hanging. Um, so, yeah that's I'm still in the process of um, filming all that so that first block drops next Thursday so Wednesday for our US friends and UK friends yeah it's so weird like majority of the people that watch my channel if I look at my analytics actually are from the US I did have a question the other day um, it was actually a little bit rude um, I don't know who it was. I've never seen her on the channel before. And um, it was like, I, 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 I don't know whether I was being extra sensitive or not, but I really didn't, I didn't like the tone in which it was written. So to me, it came across a bit abrasive. Um, not so much, well, I wouldn't say rude because she was asking a genuine question, but it was abrasive. Okay, so we're just going to go with the word abrasive. Um, so yeah, so she was very, um, and I'm not normally put off by abrasiveness, but it was like she was having a go at me because I was only working in inches. Now, this comes back to the fact that I look at my analytics and 68% of the people that are subscribed to my channel and or watch my channel are from the US and they work in Imperial but I'm also a quilter I have not found too many quilt patterns even from Australian designers some yes but not even Australian designers that actually put everything in metric they put it in inches because I would go as far as to say 95% of quilt patterns that I deal with now it's just me my what I think what I deal with are in inches so automatically I'm going to work in inches but she well this this lady was quite upset that I didn't put anything in to um, metric and her words were and this is why I found it abrasive 
why are you only using why are you only using um, inches when America is the only place that uses that in, like imperial? And I'm like, well, well, I just answered that. So if she does watch again now, she knows why. And so I had, but I did take on board what she said. So okay, that that is a very valid point. And I do know that I have people that watch from other countries and all the rest of it, and. They all use metric, including myself. In one transaction, like because my quilting business, because I long arm quilt um, for customers, in one transaction, I not only work in square foot, I also work in, like I work in both imperial and metric because the formula that I have to work out what I'm going to do on the quilt that I use is in inches because that's how I was taught to do it. But when I cut the, the fabric for them, I cut it by the meterage. I don't cut by the yard. I think a yard is 91 point something rather centimetres. Okay, so basically, um, I, but I took on what she said. So I'm endeavouring now to add the um, metric. So my patterns... <laughs> that I've already released are all in inches and I, I'd i have to go and have a look. I think most of them are just in inches. So um, I'm what I'm thinking of doing is actually just doing a supplemental that will go with that file and it'll be in metric for those that want to work in metric. Now, in my experience, and I know a lot of quilters, in my experience, most of the quilters I know here in Australia only work in inches, they don't work in metric. Um, you go to classes, it's all in inches, it's not in metric. You buy quilts, like quilt block patterns and stuff like that, it's all in inches, not in metric. Occasionally, you will get one that will have both. Um, so I'm going to endeavour. So if the lovely lady is watching, and for life of me, I can't remember her name, I did find your comment quite abrasive, but I have taken on board what you've said, and I am going to endeavour to include it. So when I speak, I'm going to automatically speak in inches, but I'm going to endeavour to add the metric cutting instructions in the description boxes below. Now, please, if I forget to do it because I've been doing my channel for almost five years now, can you believe it? And um, so I may forget because it's not something that I've done. So I will train myself to put it down there and I am endeavouring to um, do that. So just be patient with me. And I do appreciate your um, comment even though I did find it um, abrasive. And um, I think I found it abrasive because it was so direct and um, accusatory in your structure. Whipping out the big words today. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, yeah. I, but I'm going to take it on board and whatnot. So, if I forget, all my lovely regulars that watch the channel, if I forget, please remind me. <laughs> Okay, because it's not something that I have done and so I may forget more often than not um, but I am going to try to do it now I'm not I'm obviously in my videos I'm still going to say inches and stuff like that because that is just the terminology that I use all my rulers are in inches you know and that's another thing too like every I I went looking in all of my tools that I've got and I don't have anything in the way of rulers that is in metric at all and I've brought them all in this country from and from my suppliers I went and had a look on their um, on their website and the suppliers that I have personally do not have um, that I could find on their website any metric um, rulers or anything like that and I think I'd get confused I would like I would just work, rather work one or the other because I think that I would accidentally measure something and do it in like one in imperial and then one in metric and then bugger the whole thing up. And yeah, I don't think um, I personally would want to work in metric that now I, you know, I'm quite comfortable with working in imperial and because that's the way I was taught, that's the way all the patterns are written. So yeah, I, I don't know how I'd go to be honest. What the heck is going on here? having a bit of a mischief so this project is definitely a slow stitching project but I am enjoying it 
and I am getting my leaves done. Progress is progress, right? I've got a few things to do um, after this video and then I'm going to sit down for the rest of the day and endeavor to get all of those and I'm going to move them into the lounge room because oh, my husband and I have just started watching a YouTube channel called Professor Rock and it's all about music and from way back when to modern day and like he's got a Patreon and all the rest but we're not a member of his Patreon but his Patreon helps him to do daily videos on um, on YouTube and he'll pick a band some like popular ones obscure ones people that you may never never heard of and all the rest of it and um, we've been watching that and I've been so engrossed in it I stopped stitching and I've got like my sashiko sitting in the lounge room and I'll just I'll start it and then he'll put the, he'll come home put that on and then I'll just stop because I'm so engrossed because I, 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 I love um, that sort of stuff and um, many years ago I worked for a music magazine um, so it was like a, a it came out a, a weekly weekly yes weekly no it came out no it came out weekly um, cause it was the same as drum media. And so, um, so it was like a newspaper form, but, but magazine style. And, um, I used to work for them. And so we were off seeing bands and doing all that sort of stuff, like the local music scene. And there was also one in Sydney called drum media. Uh, the one I worked, worked at was called Pulse of the Illawarra. And, um, it was a great magazine to work for. And I did, uh, I did a course before going to work there where it was, you know, learning how to do mixing and lighting and all that sort of stuff. And, um, I had a great time doing it and I learned so much working there, um, in the industry and, and whatnot. And Brennan goes, I think you'll really like it. And I've watched him a couple of times, but I've never got right into the channel, but I'm just so sick of watching TV series and stuff like that, that we've been watching. Like he just brings up his channel and basically, yeah, he'll just pick something up and, and, um, well, from the obscure title, we'll watch it and whatnot. Some of them will go, yeah, no, nah. <laughs> and we'll click off it. But for the most part, it's like a, you know, we'll watch four or five of those a night and, um, yeah that's what we've been doing but it's great like if you're into music you'll absolutely love it and um like the one we watched the other day and it, it was about for um starship we built this city on rock and roll about that <laughs> and like he goes on about like it how it was like the most hated and like no one would own up to the fact that they like the song and and all this sort of stuff and yeah it was just really it was really really funny like just watching it and um and then like Brennan and I are sitting there and I love Creedence Clearwater so Eagles, Creedence Clearwater, um, Fleetwood Mac, any of those fo folksy sort of ones that were around Woodstock time um just I like that music I really like that sort of music and um it was quite funny we were sitting there talking and and like I, I started mouthing songs and or you know sort of quietly singing and all the rest of it and we were just talking about the fact that how different our households were when we were younger like he like I grew up and there was always music playing like in the car the radio was always on my dad was into like hot chocolate ELO my mum uh, there was a bit of ABBA there for a little while as well my mum was into like all the Woodstock songs um some of the tearjerker stuff from the 50s and stuff like that and um into elvis and like there was an collective amount of music and so i have an eclectic taste in music um there was sweetwood mac all those all those bands from the 70s and all the rest of it my mum was quite young when she had me and so music was a part of our life like there was always music playing and then even at my grandparents house there was always something playing um and at Nuna's, she would have the radio on and, and we'd have, you know, different style of music, more European music and stuff like that. So the music was really eclectic. So I have, like, I wouldn't say I have a broad knowledge, but I have a, quite a, um, tunes will trigger songs will start playing in my head and take me back to that time like it does for most of us. And we're, and he was just saying, no, music wasn't a part of his, I'm like, wow, that's like, you know, I can hear a song and it'll take me back and I'll know exactly what I'm doing and stuff like that. And, um, 
Yeah, and it's, it was quite an interesting conversation. It's not a conversation we've ever had before because he listens to music now all the time. Like he's in, the, well, not so much in the truck, he listens to books. But it, And it was quite funny because he was saying that a couple of his um, friends down on the Gold Coast were right into um, Credence Clearwater, which I did not know because <laughs> I actually know these girls and I did not know. Well, I know one of them. And um, they're right into Credence and he was like, the Credence Clearwater didn't suit my image. Well, we were watching it and he goes, and he said it like that. He goes, it didn't suit my image. He goes, and I, uh, rah, rah, rah. and I'm like, really? Like, you? And I'm like, really? And he goes, yeah. He goes, no, nah, wouldn't I wouldn't have a bar of it not part of my image and I'm like oh okay and that he goes and then like not no sooner had he said that and then it was like two seconds later he turns around and he goes but I think I'm gonna have to rethink my image because they played because he can't play the whole song on there he can just play snippets so um and because he is playing songs he'd probably get demonetized a bit because like this guy puts a lot of effort he goes in interviews old band members and producers and all that sort of stuff and he puts a lot of effort into um his videos and his patreon obviously support as he said he says there that um patreon supports the channel for daily videos so um because he would he'd get demonetized a lot because you can't use that music because it's copyrighted and stuff like that but he I think he might get away with it because he just does snippets of it and um, no more than like a couple of seconds of it. But all the music was coming up and like I was, I've got records still on LP from Credence and, and Eagles and all the rest of it. And I said, yes, oh, I might have to listen to a bit of Credence in the truck tomorrow. And I'm like, yeah, you should. It's good. And then I'm like, but then again, there's nothing like listening to Credence Clearwater on LP on vinyl. There is just something about it. It's the same as like I listen to The Doors um because i like the doors as well i listen to the doors on like compact this it just doesn't have the same grainy sound like it just i love that grainy sound of an lp and um i've just recently given all my lps to savannah and um because she's got a we got her a turntable because she said she wanted to get some lps and i said well you get a turntable and you can have all my lps you can have the ones i got from my grandmother and and all the ones I had when I was a teenager, a lot of them are missing. Um, they got damaged and whatnot, but I managed to salvage a few. So I've given them all to her. I know that she'll look after them. And um, the other day I was I was sitting out here and then I heard she was playing the, the LPs and um, she was having a fat old time in there. And she's like, oh, it sounds so different. I'm like, yeah, it's a sound that... It's like no other, and the, you don't get it from the digital music these days. She goes, I really like it. So I think um, she wants to go down to Melbourne, and I think we're going to have to push. She wants to go down for her birthday, but we're going to push it back a month or so because um, we've got to find her a place. We want to find her a place to live and everything first and, and whatnot. And, um, yeah, so it's not really the time to take a break. So we're going to do an IOU birthday present for her because she doesn't want a bar party or anything like that. And so, um, and we decided we're not going to Bali because it's too iffy with flights. There's been a lot of cancellations and stuff like that. So I'm going to try and find if there's some record stores down in Melbourne to go and visit with her and um, get her a couple of LPs for her birthday. So she'll, re she'll remember them as... Um, her 18th birthday present and I did hear not too long ago like even though I'm not in that industry anymore I sort of still try to see what's going listen to what's going on today's music um I like some of it I'm not into much of it probably since probably 2011-12 maybe even 2013 from there onwards I've sort of lost a bit of interest in today's music um there's a few songs that'll come through that I really like and I think my girls like that too because I'm quite eclectic in my um, listening and I've grown with the music and I don't bar today's music. Some of it's atrocious, but, um, you know, some of the pop songs and stuff, your Taylor Swifts and, you know, your Katy, Katy Perry's and all that sort of stuff. I really like that sort of stuff as well. Um, that, but I always gravitate back. And see, Savannah's very much in my taste of music because we've spent a lot of time in cars traveling and stuff like that to and from King Arroy and I always had my music playing so the girls have grown up with a lot of music um and it's quite funny that their dad didn't 
um, yeah, it was quite an interesting conversation. And, he, and I said, this is good because you'll be getting a whole truckload of different music that you can listen to that you otherwise thought were you were too good for. <laughs> <laughs> when he said it, I just cracked up laughing. I'm like, oh, God, really? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, he's a funny little character at times. He comes out with some pearl, as I tell you. <laughs> I just sit there go, what? <laughs> yeah, he's fun. That's all that matters. <laughs> Didn't work for me. I don't know why that was on there. I'm really liking them. Like, you can see now that they're starting to come together. They're going to look amazing once it's on there. Like, you can imagine the whole, like, the little round circles and, and all the rest of it. All right, I'm just going to give my fingers a rest for a bit and have a bit of a drink of coffee on that. So, yeah. But, yeah, so we've been watching that. It's been good. Like, I've really enjoyed it. So, it's called Professor Rock. If you haven't heard of it before, go and check him out. Um, and he's got a sponsorship for um, reading glasses as well. I haven't gone and looked, but he, he does a little, as he's talking, he'll just break into that um, advert, uh, the sponsorship thing. So it is a paid promotion one. So he's got to make money some way. So, you know, he, he obviously is very passionate about it. And, um, and it, like, he has, the, the way it's set up, he's got this big, like, cassette tape behind him our little table like just over his shoulder here and then over this shoulder he's got LPs there and it changes everyone and like um I find myself looking at the LPs and he wears like band shirts and stuff like that and Brennan goes sometimes you'll know because he'll do mystery ones so you've got to try and guess who it is but and he'll start talking and he'll talk about it but he won't mention who the band is and he said sometimes the the shirts and the LPs behind him give clues of who he's going to talk about and so yeah so he um he changes that up and there's been some really good like um lps behind him and stuff like that i'm like oh i know that band and then there'll be bands that brandon's never like obscure bands that he's never even heard from flock of seagulls is one that i had never heard of and they talk he talked about that the other day and um their music and whatnot music was a little bit weird it wasn't my cup of tea and like he'll also tell you um sometimes if it like it might have only made it to a certain place in america on the charts but in australia it charted really well or in england and stuff like that sometimes not every bit of video but i don't think flock of seagulls um charted here at all like i don't remember them at all i don't even remember the song i don't even remember hearing the song i think it was hugely popular in the uk because um, i'm pretty sure it's a uk band and maybe in the in america but maybe in Europe as well but I don't remember hearing it here at all um but then again I might have been too young it may have been still not being played on the air when I was into music and but I was into music from a very early age so uh, the other day I was going through my stuff as you know I've been slowly going through my things getting rid of stuff I have got a big thing of stuff for giveaways and everything as well um I've got a, while I'm talking about that, I've got a big giveaway happening for those that watch my floss tube. Don't forget, on the 28th um, of October is my 100th episode, so I'm having a giveaway for that. So keep an eye out. I'm getting stuff together. All right, so the other day I was going through, I don't even know why I kept this, but it must have got mixed up with some papers, and I was going through a tub of papers and stuff like that, and I found this, the Fox Collection. Now, this is from... I don't even know when I got this. It was from a while ago because I haven't got one in a while. But I was flicking through it and I'm think like there's some beautiful cross stitches in here and, and I've got plenty to keep me going at the moment. But there was a couple of really pretty ones in here that I wouldn't mind to do it. But um, look at that peacock one. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? Like, And that hope is also nice too. I like this one here, how it's broken up and whatnot so um i thought that uh, i was flipping through it and like i haven't gone and had, had a look or anything like that um on their website but i came across where is it must be a bit further up here i came across like there's some gorgeous stuff this owl one's really cute too there's some hardanger and i'd like to do some tableware but my family are brutal I like I like this. I really like this. My my family are just 
so brutal on stuff. Like, they have no respect for the handmade item. Savannah is a little bit meta, but the other lot, not so much. That moon. Morgana, look at that moon. You need to have that moon in your life, Morgana. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's from Khan. No, no, I don't. <laughs> Sorry, Lynn. <Lynn. laughs> There's a, like, oh, look at that one. Whoa, that is massive. It's 70 by 50 centimeters. That is huge. No, thank you. That's a lot of, that's a lot of peacock. Some cute little, little stuff. But what I'm actually in this book for, oh, these are diamond paintings, I think. Yeah, there's a diamond painting. Well, Gunnar, there's another stitching, another one for you. <laughs> diamond painting this time. It's quicker. She's going to, I'm going to get a text message from her going, what are you doing? Um, where is it? It must be in the back. Ah, here we go. I am thinking of doing a couple of jigsaw puzzles for when I move and like actually do them and have them done. I love this one. How adorable is that? And this cat one as well. So I'm thinking of getting those two going to see if they're still available. And I love this magpie one. That is quintessentially Australia. I see magpies doing that all the time. In our park, we have um, bubblers that have like little dog bowls underneath so it catches the water from the bubbler. Um, so you have, the human drinks from the bubbler because it spouts up and then um, the water the water that drops away is caught in the bowl in the bottom and the birds get to drink out of it and the dogs get to drink out of it. So I'm thinking of getting those two... Um, so Gossip Party, <laughs> they named that very well, is uh, a, thousand, a thousand pieces and it is 76 by 48 and on the shelf is also a thousand pieces and it's 51 by 61 centimetres. So I'm thinking, like this one, even this one's really cool too. That'd be pretty cool to have in the, um, in the studio as well, just up behind me. So I'm thinking that those three, if I can still get them, I'm going to get them and then I'm also going to get so I can do them and not have to worry about having it set up. Is it in this book? Is it this book that I sent it in? Yes, there it is. The puzzle mat so I can just roll it up and then I don't have to worry about it. So I can just roll it out and roll it up. I, I mean, I would have loved to have done some puzzles ages ago but Mia, I got her a little puzzle and we sat down and done it and then she just, yeah, she just decided that she'd wash things so i'm pretty sure that you can ring up and place orders or they've got a website i'll have a little bit of a closer look but i'm gonna go and suss them out and see if they've got them because i wouldn't mind doing a couple of um a couple of those um jigsaw puzzles so it'd be just nice to do something where i'm not having to count and i can just zone out spend a couple of hours like the diamond painting my diamond painting is my zone out thing i don't have to count i don't have to um concentrate i don't have to fight with it like i'm fighting with these things right now um yeah i just yeah i think that um that might be on the cards oh, i don't have too many little green ones left which is good so I'm thinking that that's what I'm going to do. But I am actually going to call it a day because I just realised I've been on for over an hour and you guys are probably thinking, oh my goodness, is she ever going to stop talking? But I'm going to get on with doing what I need to do. I've got to film a few other things and I've got to check when these girls have got to go to work. So I will end up um, working around that. And then I've got a heap of stuff I've got to do to this afternoon. It is the 1st of October, so I'm actually starting my Halloween Quaker today. I'm, I've got went and got some more um, PVC pipe, so I'm going to make up a Q-snap for it because I'm going to work on that an hour a day. And, um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited about that. But that is it from me today. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you for joining me while I prattle on. And um, I will see you again next Saturday for slow stitching Saturday and hopefully fingers crossed I will have all my leaves done and starting on some other stitches as well but have a wonderful day everybody I hope that you get lots of crafting in and I will see you all again next time bye for now